الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وثانك الله سبحانه وتعالى نشكره regarding our gathering this جمعة and بإذن الله تعالى this خطبة is going to be in regards to our Lord is Allah سبحانه وتعالى سورة فصلت verses 30 specifically to verse 34 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in these verses أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون Indeed the ones who say our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ثم استقاموا and pursue the straight path. What happened to them? تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels descend on them. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا Do not be afraid. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Nor grieve. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ And receive the glad tidings of paradise that you were promised. أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ الْإِسْتِقَامَةِ Or being steadfast on a straight path. Yatadammanu, it requires and includes, we will say insha'Allah, al-amalu salih. To receive this status from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires that you do good deeds in this life. So you can get that welcome from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Wal-amalu salih and good deeds include being good to your siblings, to your parents, to your neighbors, to the jama'ah, giving sadaqah, anything that you can think of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, these are good deeds. And the angels, they were protecting this person by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them what they want in the akhirah. The angels, the malaika, kiram and katibin, that write every single action that me and you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them to protect people at specific times. Not all the people, but those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows their, His mercy upon. And as we all know, even when that act is done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded for that person where they're going to go in the hereafter. Is it a hellfire or is it paradise? And as we all know, the a'mal are bil khawatim by the ending of the person. How you end your life, that's how it is. If you end your life in a way that is not obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will have a difficult time in the hereafter. But if you are from somebody who has a clean heart, alhamdulillah, does not have any anger towards his Muslim brothers or sisters, shows people that he is somebody who is actually a practicing Muslim, not just by his actions, but as well as by the way he speaks verbally. Because you may have somebody who prays all the time in the first row, the second row, fast Thursdays and Mondays, follows the sunnahs of the Prophet Muhammad but people are not free from his tongue or her tongue. So not only by your actions in your body parts, what I mean by the ibadat of the limbs, but also by your speech. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ We were your allies in this life and in the hereafter. وَأَوْلِيَاءُ اللَّهِ The one who is the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not go around and tell the people I am the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
If anybody claims that he is a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you, then this person has a big problem. Because the wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is not very easy to attain. And one who speaks like this, you know, put a question mark on that person. And in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you obviously what you want. In these two verses, we spoke about specific things regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to realize He is our Lord, you must come with the actions of La ilaha illallah. Many of us say La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah is easy for us to say. But living La ilaha illallah is not very easy. To live La ilaha illallah means that you are away from anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes to your best of your abilities. Nobody's perfect. And that you make the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you stay away from the nawahi, things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to stay away from. As we all know, we are in akhirul zaman. These are the last days we are living in. Our youngsters nowadays, um, if I'm not mistaken, all the schools are off today. And I would like, inshallah, if we can come closer together, bi ta'ala, speaking of the students who are off, if you can come closer, inshallah, make space for the brothers who are going to be late. You know, we don't want them to stand outside. It's very cold outside. So if you can come together, inshallah, fill any gaps that you see, bi ta'ala, and then we'll straighten the lines. And we are living in a time of fitan. A lot of trials, many, many trials, specifically for our young ones. Because the older generation, they have, you know, the foundation, you can say, of living, alhamdulillah, as a Muslim. Because they were raised in an Islamic environment and so forth. But this generation, they have all types of shubahat and doubts around them. For them to say, my Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in itself, they are questioning that in itself. Alamatu istifham. We say our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they're questioning if their creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the amount of doubts that is being put in them. From social media, to other forms of media, to their actual professors, to their teachers, to the curriculum that they read at school. All these theories that they read. They're questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why it is very important for the khutaba and the ones who give the muhadarat, the lectures, to always speak about tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot get enough of tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you believe you have enough, then there's a problem with you. Tawheed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very important that we single out Allah in His uluhiyya, in His worship, and in His rububiyya, in His lordship, and in His names and attributes. And the more the one knows about Allah's names and attributes, the closer he will be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just memorize the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understand the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned these two verses. The importance of His being one subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we mention in the third and fourth verse, bi Allah Ta'ala, تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ أَلَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورِ الرَّحِيمِ Right? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives you a present. What is that? From the All-Merciful, the Most Forgiving. This is from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّا دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better in speech than the one who says, or that the one who calls, I should say, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving da'wah. Who is better in speech than the one who gives da'wah? Calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the wadaif al This is what the prophets used to do. When you see somebody giving da'wah, you should say, MashaAllah, this person is doing something that is good. Obviously calling to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And you know what really breaks my heart at times is when I see people who are non-Muslims giving da'wah and standing outside in the cold, calling to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And unfortunately, we are you know, occupied amongst ourselves in minor issues and small issues. But other people, they're working. They're working to put doubts in my children and your children, day and night. They don't get tired. If they get one person, that is sufficient for them. Two, even better. And they will continue until they get each and every single one of us. That is why it is very important to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. The dua that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa used to make the most, O turner of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon this deen. Very, very important. So a da'wah ila Allah, calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must preach what you call to. That is the way you do it. If you are calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling people to pray, to give sadaqah, to not backbite, to not eat haram, to be good to their parents, to connect with their family members, to be good to their neighbors, and continuously say and preach good things to them. But they see the opposite in you. This is a big problem. This is a big problem. This is actually from the characteristics of the munafiq. We cannot say this person is an outright hypocrite because we cannot open their heart and say, see what is in their heart. But they have sifat, some characteristics. So in order for people to accept your da'wah, you must be the best or try to be like the best example, which is our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was our best example when it comes to da'wah and when it comes to having a role model. The number one role model for us, every Muslim, and every human being is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when we speak about role models for the youngsters, inshallah, role models aren't NBA celebrities or basketball players or, you know, some sort of people that we see on social media on a regular basis. Our role model is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how do they know who the messenger is if they never studied the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam due to the unfortunate steps the parents took in not teaching their child about the seerah. Yes, we want our children to be Muslims who are on the straight path. But you have never even asked him what La ilaha illallah means. Any parent here, bi Ta'ala, who hasn't asked their child what does La ilaha illallah means, there's a big problem. And if you ask them, I would think maybe a certain percentage would not hold the answer. That's the reality. We keep giving these khutbahs and speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but kalimah to tawheed, our children cannot tell us what that means. How to make wudu, how to pray. Our children do not know how to do. How to read the Quran and hold on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our children do not understand. Where do we want the assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where do you, do you want the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How does this work? And you know what the last resort is? Go to the imam's office, the shaykh's office, and say, you know what, my child needs you to read Quran. Please, come, you know, my child, he's not feeling very well, something is wrong. Can you please read Quran on him? Can you please read Quran on her? Or maybe it's ayn, you know, the evil eye. Maybe it's, you know, hasid, envy. Something has happened to my child. No, 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 you happened to your child. That's what happened. You were the problem that happened to your child when you did not teach your child the fundamentals of Islam, the basics. And we all know the farther you are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you are distancing yourself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more problems you're going to encounter because who is your ally, who is your partner? As shaytan wa iyadu billah. That is your partner. And we cannot blame everything on the children. Wallah, we cannot blame everything on the children. As a matter of fact, they are the dhuhiyya, they are the victims, wallah, at times. They are the victims of su'u tarbiya, a bad upbringing. You can deny what you want to deny. Denial is what got us where we are today. Not accepting the truth is what got us where we are today as Muslims. That is the problem. We believe that we don't do anything wrong. And that is the child's fault. What happened? The child does not see you read Quran. The child does not see you say Bismillah before you eat. The child does not see you go to the masjid. The child does not see his mom wear hijab. What khair do you want from your child? 
What khair do you want from your child in this situation? And this is the situation of the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We are far from our deen. And if everybody was responsible for themselves, al musuliyah if everybody was responsible for themselves, we will see a big difference in our Muslim communities around the world, alhamdulillah. But first start with yourself. Do not speak about your neighbor or your cousins or your friend or so-and-so or that lady or this man. Start with yourself. Start with yourself. Ibda bi nafsik. Rabbi awladak. Raise your children. And then you will see the fruits and the effects that you and your family have on the community. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلاة ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. الله سبحانه وتعالى continues to say in the fourth verse that we are going over إن شاء الله ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم. الله سبحانه وتعالى says that evil or good and evil are not equal. In no way are good and evil equal. We understand this. This is something that we all know. Repel that evil with something that is better. Subhanallah. Somebody mistreats you. You have this animosity in your heart towards your Muslim brother. What do you do? Do you wrong him as well? No. You don't fix a mistake with a mistake. Rather, you treat him good. The person wronged you. ظلمك اغتابك spoke about you did things to your family you know what be better than him alhamdulillah this is the khuluq of the muslim the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us this he went through much that we cannot even we didn't go through ادفع بالتي هي احسن right that's what you're supposed to repel that evil with something that is better and how do you do that? Treat them the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treated people who wronged him. 13 years of his life, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent in Mecca. He went through many, many difficulties. Difficulties so we can practice our deen here. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 10 years in the Medina. 23 years of his life is calling to La ilaha illallah. He was hurt physically. He was, you know, he went through psychological, you know, uh, abuse from his enemies. He went through many things. But how did he treat them? What did he wish for them? He wished for them to become Muslim. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Us as Muslims, we're not even thinking about, for the most part, the non-Muslims. We're thinking about how we can treat each other in a wrong way at times or how we can do payback that person wronged me I'm gonna pay back so we have internal problems we do not even unfortunately fix let alone speak about calling to la ilaha la to non-muslims this is a shame this is aib this is unfortunate we are Muslims and we're occupied with ourselves we are already guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but yet we are occupied with ourselves because of shortcomings Brothers and sisters don't speak to one another for years. Fathers and you know sons do not speak to one another for years. Minor issues we cannot fix. So when somebody wrongs you, be that person who's better than that other person. Idfa' billati ahsan. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, adawa. Behold, the one you and the other person, those two, the two people who had animosity amongst one another. Adawa ka'annahu waliyun hamim. He will become as a loyal friend. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do that and you treat him better and you let him understand that you are a better person than him, you will see the fruits of that bidnillahi ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran. Not to hate one another, not to go against one another. 
and the worst punishment in regards to you, in regards to a person that has oppressed you, the worst thing that that person can feel is when you are good to him, subhanAllah. In regards to you, he's going to be ashamed of himself. She's going to be ashamed. After all that I put them through, they are you know, welcoming me, they are smiling in front of me, they are inviting me to their house, and so forth. For umum and overall, brothers and sisters in Islam, these verses speak about how we can be the Allah Ta'ala prosper in this life and in the hereafter. How we can prosper in this life and in the hereafter. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants us to maintain the ukhuwa, the brotherhood, and the sisterhood, and make sure that we have this. But we cannot fix our problems until we fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in honesty. You have to be honest. If you claim to fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you must have musamaha for your brothers and sisters in Islam. This is very, very important. وَالْمُسْلِمُ أَخُ Muslim, And the Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. This is very, very deep in itself. The Muslim is the brother of the other Muslim. When you see the other brother, whatever culture they come from, whether they come from India, Guyana, Somalia, China, any other country you can think of, that is your brother in Islam. That's it. You cannot oppress this person. Nor can you oppress non-Muslims as well. But I believe you understand the context that I'm speaking about. So the Muslim has to understand that in order for us to be united in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must show by our akhlaq and the way we deal with one another. In order to be from those people who have husnul khatima, a good ending. Nas'adullah dhalik. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nas'adullah dhalik to give us husnul khatima, a good ending. In order to have that, you have to have a clean heart. Start from today, brothers and sisters in Islam. Start from today, forgive one another. Have nothing in your heart towards anybody. And forgive them. It is not easy to do. But it is possible, alhamdulillah. Once you forgive that person, do good deeds. Just like you have just done by forgiving that person. And continue. Because the more good deeds you do, يوم القيامة, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you your actions. And the less good you do, Yom al Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show you your actions. You will be rewarded according to your actions. And you will be punished according to your actions. Very, very simple. That is as simple as it gets. So why waste your time? Why go through all this difficulty and hate? Why have to go through some sicknesses? Some people, they get sick because of this. You know, their heart, they get more heart problems. They have issues. Because of this feeling that they have in their heart towards somebody. Let that go. Say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Leave that alone. Leave them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Treat them the way you want to be treated. Idfa' billatihi ahsan. Our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husnul khatima, a good ending is something that we all want. Treating somebody the way we want to be treated is something that we all wish for ourselves and our family members. Hating somebody is something that is not good as a Muslim. To hate somebody as a Muslim, to hate your brother who is a Muslim, to hate them is something that is unacceptable. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had a clean heart. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu when you would see him, he and the companions dealt with people the way he taught them. Of course, nobody's perfect. The companions weren't perfect. They had problems amongst themselves. But they're better than all of us. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them and they were pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the final message inshaAllah before we pray our salah is that as Muslims, we are accountable for ourselves. We must realize that. And at times, we get faded away by other things. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in the hadith, "Al Muslimu man salim al Muslimin min lisanihi wa yadi." Kama qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the believer is the one that other believers are far from their or they're free from their harm, either it be physical or verbal. Very very simple. Control these two, bidnillahi taala. 
Control these two and you will be okay with Allah Ta'ala. But if you are somebody who was quick to speak, يغتاب الإخوة والأخوات He backbites. He makes two brothers and sisters go against one another. He makes, you know, uh, his job is just to make people, you know, drama amongst the Muslim Ummah. Drama, 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 drama. This person, there's little khair in this person, you can say. This person, he's occupied with things that shaitan made him occupied with. You as a Muslim have to continue and move. Live your life, alhamdulillah, according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Be somebody who has the husnul khatima. And I'm going to emphasize this continuously. Everything is by the khawatim. How you end your life is the way it goes. So do not think that you, O oh youngster, by living a life that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you're going to live till you're 70 years old and then you're going to make hajj and then you make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not how it works. Because you don't know if you're going to see 18, 19 or 20 or 25. You don't know how long you're going to live. We must thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has made us from these people who congregated in his masjid. As for the ones who do not come to the masjid, it is an obligation upon us to call to them, to bring them to the masjid. Because at times we neglect our community, Muslim community, and just focus on ourselves. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم انا نسالك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اللهم انصر الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصرنا يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا اللهم اهدي شبابنا وبناتنا يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم زدنا علما يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا علما يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم بارك لنا في امورنا كلها يا ارحم الراحمين we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a income that is halal so we can spend in his cause we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure those who are sick amongst us we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have his mercy or shower his mercy upon those who are deceased we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our brothers and sisters in Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are ash-shakirin. Waqimu salah.